Welcome back to Puppet Time Online, your chance to sit down with some of the puppetry community's finest, and me, and hear about what they know about. I'm your host, Eric Wright. It's brought to you by The Puppet Kitchen. It's really nice to have you all. Um, as usual, I've got uh, Katie over here producing the show. Hi! She's going to be uh, wa uh, watching your comments and questions. Uh, so if you have any uh, comments or questions for me or my guest today, be sure to put them down in the, in the chat. Um, we're on YouTube Live and Facebook Live, and I think Twitch is over here, too. Or wherever the chat is, depending on where you're watching it. It's technology, right, Katie? Yes. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited to have our guest today. Uh, he is an incredible puppet designer, puppet builder, um, and a puppeteer on um, a m number of different things, including a multiple Emmy Award winning Sesame Street. Um, so please welcome to the show, Martin P. Robinson. Hi! Hi. <laughs> it's seamless around here. Absolutely, absolutely. Which is I mean, uh, you know, what, it's we, what we've come people. used to. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm really happy to have you on the show. It's so nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, I think the first thing that we always like to do is to start by asking our guests how they got started in puppetry. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about that. All right. How much time have you got? You got really well, it's only an hour long show. This is okay. Show All right. I'll give, you the, I'll give you the less than an hour version then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started out as a child. Uh, it was a rainy night. <laughs> uh, uh, I... Oh, I a shy kid from Wisconsin, uh, Halloween is the one day of the year when you can when you can uh, cut loose and be something else and put on a mask and and run through uh, screaming through the the neighborhood and uh, with with no consequences, right? I like that. <laughs> that seems like <laughs> way too much fun to do one day a year. Yeah. So uh, so I would I would kind of I would really work on it, work on the costume, work on you know, and then I started getting into uh, makeup special effects. I read uh, Dick Smith's Do-It-Yourself Monster Makeup Magazine, which nice. sounds silly, but it actually changed my life. That's and cool. uh, so, so I was able to really kind of change, you know, uh, change the way I, I looked and got into some, uh, you know, into prosthetics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, that and then I got into acting because of that, uh, uh, of, of, of all this character stuff. It kind of, kind of freed me from my, my shy kid enough so I could play roles that, you know, as long as I wore a beard and an eye patch and walked mm -hmm. with a limp or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, as long as any, anything that wasn't me was fine. Uh, so uh, I, I did that all through uh, high school and I came to New York and uh, went to acting school. Uh, one of the main things, uh, one of the reasons for coming to New York was just getting the heck out of Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> So, which, which I just really, really needed to do badly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and now I can go back with no uh -huh. problem. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I uh, graduated from acting school and, you know, and, and, and uh, six foot two affable white kid from Wisconsin, you know, I was not interested in playing those roles. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so, you know, and that's what you get cast as, right? You know, oh, you're six foot two, you know, you, you, you know, you're a big guy. Well, you know, I can be small. <laughs> uh, so I got a job with a with a, a marionette company, uh, Niccolo Marionettes at the time. Now it's okay. a New York New York Puppet Works. Oh, cool! Uh, yeah. I was qualified to be a puppeteer because it was a touring show, and I had a driver's license. So nice. I'm a puppeteer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the rest is easy to teach. Right, right. And so you know, you just you get sent out on a, like a 23 week tour of uh, of Jack and the Beanstalk, and you either go mad uh, or you uh, learn how to work a puppet. And you uh -huh. know, you, you as you know, we kind of do both. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> so I uh, I got the basics of puppetry with that. And when, when I worked for Bill Baird a couple of years later uh, on his last last big concert show, his big show that he did at Bush Gardens, that's yeah, when I was really sure that. Right? Uh, pardon? Yeah, yes. picture of that. That's Bill. That's my I love that picture of Billy Baird. He was so much fun to work for. Just a wonderful, wonderful dear old man. And this was, you know, at the end of a long career. Sorry, towards the end of a long career. Sure. Illustrious. Uh, and you know, and, and it was his, his last big, big show at uh, Bush Gardens in in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. Wow. And it was, you know, that show had everything. You can see me and my first ever real girlfriend in the back there, Katie, yeah. uh, working these big, huge goon characters. And, and you know, it had rod puppets and marionettes, of course, and shadow puppets and yeah. hand puppets, all this stuff. And I, so I, I really learned with Bill that, uh, that a, puppet, a puppet could be anything. You know? and, and, and if you got in on the design and building process, then you could, you could design anything, you could build anything, because I had, I had some, some skills uh, in designing a, a building. Uh, my dad was, a, was, a, was an engineer. And, uh, and so that was the cool part, was, was realizing that you could design anything, design it, you build it, then you perform it. And that's, yeah. ever since then, that's really been, been my, uh, what I've focused on. And with him, you know, it, it wasn't just little, little versions of people and animals, mm -hmm. it was, these moving living sculptures, these things that were just really uh, symbolic, symbolic creatures. I mean, look at like uh, in, in, the, in the, the Art of the Puppet, uh, Bill Baird book, like things like crutch face, yeah. uh, you know, just a face with eyes and the legs are two crutches. It's just mind bending yeah. and it blew my mind. So that's when I, that's when I decided, okay, I'm a puppeteer now. Cause at that point, you know, I could, you know, I could be an animals, vegetables, minerals. Yeah big things, tiny things. Uh, and so then I, I kind of started my apprenticeship. Uh, I was working for every, every company that I could, that could, I could, uh, you know, get in with. Of course, you know, you know how it is with, with puppet companies. They say, you know, with the, well, this is the way you do it. And, you know, and everything else is kind of, is kind of, you know, not the way to do it. And then you'll work for somebody else and say, no, don't do it their way. Do it my way. This is, this is, and then, you know, and then, and so and you do, yeah. at the end, you kind of pick and choose what works for you. And, yeah. and so I worked for uh, a guy named Paul Ashley, who did the Rudy Kazuti show and, and Bob and Judy Brown were just delightful. And a guy named Addis Williams, who was a great mentor. Uh, and like I said, uh, Nick Coppola. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, 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 David Sorodiak. I worked with him for a while. Mm -hmm. So that's when I kind of you know, learn, you really, really started learning about puppetry. And that, that's, I, you know, you kind of go from, from an apprentice to a journeyman to, you know, and then you're kind of a professional. Yeah. Uh, so by the time I, uh, by the time I got a chance to audition, for instance, for the the Muppets in in '81, mm -hmm. uh, I had had some experience with with hand puppets working for Bill, yeah. and and it's weird, you know, working working a marionette, you know, you're working a marionette control, and you got the airplane control here, and you're lip syncing here, ding, 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 you know, by by hitting the little the little trigger, right, that pulls the string. Well, right. it turns out that ding, 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 ding that. Not you know are not that far apart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so by the time I auditioned for the Muppets, I I could I could handle basic lip sync and uh, and I learned learned to monitor technique. Yeah. That that's um that's really cool. I really <laughs> love that. I mean, like I mean, like I see that in myself so much too. It's like, <clears throat> and I know a lot of people out there, like a lot of puppeteers and a lot of people just finding what they do. Like that's kind of the the path, you know. Well, you don't um, know what the path is. I mean, uh, the, the path, the path you, you don't know what the goal is. Right. And the thing is, you know, is to follow these interesting paths. And it's, as long as you kind of know the difference between where you want to go and where you don't want to go, yeah. you just keep going where you want to go and see where that leads you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's so, it's so great to hear that you like learn from, you really value learning from a bunch of different people and, and sort of, finding what suits you from all of these different, you know, different kinds of education, that there's no one way to do puppetry. There's only like this, this person's way, this company's way, that kind of way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I've, I've tried to parlay that and, and, and be a, a good mentor in turn for 
the you know the folks that have uh, you know come under 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 my umbrella. That's right, because you among you you along with uh, Matt Vogel and Peter Lentz lead the the um, Sesame Workshop like uh, monitor workshops. Yeah. For new for new performers looking for yeah. you know new people and sort of training up. I talked with Pam a little Tam, Pam Marcier a little bit about this too and just like expanding the umbrella of people who have this this skill to do monitor work um, because it's so specific. Yeah. Yeah, um, Matt, Matt calls it deepening our bench. I, yeah. guess, I guess that's a sports term. <laughs> he would. He's so sporty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then now you know we've got all kinds of uh, racial justice things we're doing. So, yeah. so we've got uh, we've got a, a workshop with uh, with black female puppeteers that we're working with right now, and mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, we're uh, doing some. We're going to be doing some casting uh, with some Native Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the in the coming months, uh, so you know we're we're being you know the you know, Sesame is a good conscientious company to work for. I mean, they're yeah. I mean, everything that you think that they probably should be mm-hmm. as, as far as an icon. You know, yeah, they 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 walk the walk. Yeah, I've I've noticed that too. I mean, I've I've intersected with Sesame's path only a couple of times, a little bit, a lot with the people who are in that. Uh, in that world, but it really feels like they are, they like have an awareness of the fact that they're iconic and that they have an influence and that they are using that in a positive way. And they're like embracing it in a really great way. Yeah. They've got a, they've got a, a, a responsibility. I'd, I'd even call it a, you know, a sacred responsibility mm-hmm. to, uh, to do, to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. I, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is so, so, if anyone out there doesn't know, but you you play the role of Telly Monster and Snuffleupagus uh, yes. the, on Sesame Street, as well as many other characters. Um, there you are. I, with I, I like to say we I, I do I do Snuffy, who's fifteen feet long and eight feet tall, right? Uh, and I and I work Slimy the Worm, who's, uh, That's right. who's about the, about this big. <laughs> so yeah, so so it, my 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 dream of uh, of you know of of being free of my physical body is really nicely exemplified <laughs> between slimy and snuffy. I love that. How do you, uh, you know, we, just in thinking about how Sesame kind of changes and evolves, like you, Telly Monster and Snuffy, like you've been in those roles for a very long time, uh, you know, and Sesame Street has changed quite a bit over the course of you playing those characters. How do you, like how has your perception of the the role of those characters changed as the show changes? The the show evolves all the time. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it it evolves you know year by year and you know and season by season and you know and as it's it's a show that's never gotten never been satisfied resting on its laurels at all. Uh, and you know and you'd think that they they could, but they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they're constantly striving to do it better, be more up to date, be more responsive to what kids are actually saying and to, you know, and, and, and taking into account, you know, everything that's constantly being learned about, about education and, the, you know, the, and the process of assimilation <laughs> for the, for, for kids. Yeah. Uh, so, so that, al- that always changes. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean it's, it's so funny that the, that the stuff that I did back in the day, that's being released now on a Sesame. What do they call it? Uh, old school. Uh, yeah, Sesame Old School on YouTube. Yeah, uh, which is it has a little disclaimer in the front, which is this sure. is not appropriate for children. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's but, like well, yeah, because the children are different. Like the the thought about what like what children's entertainment is is different. And 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 at some point, somebody decided that it was not okay for Oscar the Grouch to call Big Bird stupid. Uh huh. Yeah. Which, which you know, was was normal back then, and you know, and a lot of things that we took for granted back then uh, are, you know, we we're we're looking at uh, much more carefully. But you know, but the company has always done that. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, uh, so you know, my my character uh, Telly Monster, who used to used to be one of the actual mainstays of the show, uh, is is very is is very seldom used these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's uh studies show that his his angst uh is is some somehow transferable 
-hmm. you know, where, where, whereas it's intended to be uh, a, a relief valve yeah. for, for, for kids to say, oh, you know, hey, you know, calm down, Telly, it's okay, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> you don't need to worry about it, you know, and, 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 and therefore put their own problems and angst in perspective. You know, it turned out that they were uh, uh, taking on some mm -hmm. of Telly's angst. So, uh, so it's, a, it's a gentler show in that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, and, and Elmo, you know, exemplifies that. You know, I mean, it's 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 very much uh, the Elmo show these days. He is sure. the he is the uh, the the, kind of the, spur right the surrogate mm -hmm. for uh, for the kids. Mm -hmm. And and Ryan Dillon, who perf who performs Elmo, is brilliant, <laughs> brilliant performer. He's incredible. Yeah. We you know we he has he raises the bar every day and, and all of us old timers look at him and say, Oh my God, the nuances that, 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 that he is, that he is doing with that character are just astounding, you know, and, 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 and thus, you know, making it a really effective uh, communication education tool. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Did you so, um, yes, want to throw so, yeah. a question in front of you? Yeah. So things, things are changing all the time. Yeah. We, yes. We had a question from one of our viewers. Oh yeah, oh yeah. How did you get the role of Telly Monster? That's a great question. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what that, what the origin uh, story was. The same, the same way I got all my roles on Sesame Street. Somebody died. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody died. Nobody died. Uh, I, 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 I took over Snuffy from uh, from Jerry Nelson. Jerry Nelson hurt his back doing the character and was doing the voice from the booth for a couple of years while Richard Hunt was in the front. Uh -huh. And then they realized, well, we got to pay the guy in the booth. We got to pay the two guys in the costume. That's three people we have to pay when, you know, we could just <laughs> combine it the way, you know, the way it was intended right. and have the voice actually come from inside the character the way, the way God intended. <laughs> right, right, of course. <laughs> so now they're only paying. Anyway, so I got, I got hired to to kind of reunite that character to his intended roots. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, Telly Monster was started by uh, Brian Meal. Actually, it was started by uh, Bobby Payne. Uh, huh. years when, 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 when he was a, 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 when he had a little motors in his head, his eyes would, would, would do any, it was a, yeah. he was a television addict. Right. Which, which is uh, where the name Telly comes from, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it was just, he just watched television. And being a television addict was really interesting for about, oh, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds <laughs> of airtime. So they killed that pretty fast and uh -huh. uh, turned him into this kind of angst, general angst ridden character. And then I, uh, and then Brian Meal actually, actually left the show. He's one of, <laughs> one of the few people who, who chose to leave the show. Uh -huh. uh, he wanted to, he didn't consider himself a puppeteer and wanted to write. And now he's a very well-known writer, which is. Yeah. I think Pam, Pam Marciero was talking about inheriting Congetta from him as well. It took five. Brian Meal is so brilliant uh, at what he, at what he did. You know, I'm pissed at him for leaving and thankful <laughs> that he, that he left kind of <laughs> in equal parts. Sure. Uh, he was a great mentor, uh, but it took five people to, to cover his breadth of characters. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he did Barkley, Barkley the dog, uh -huh. uh, uh, Clementine, uh, uh, Forgetful Jones's girlfriend. Uh, he played human characters on the show. Uh, uh, he played. He was uh, uh, the original Elmo. <laughs> he was yeah. uh, Kelly, uh, Grungetta. Uh, you know, a, a dozen other characters. It's wild. Back it's when really back wild. when men could play women, and you know, and uh, yeah, and, yeah, never. Before we realized that, hey, you know, women can do this too. <laughs> we, yeah, what a what a <laughs> what a strange realization that more than it's half of the population crazy. Of already knew. Still getting my head around it. <laughs> no comment, Katie. <laughs> Please do not ask any questions about that. <laughs> All right, I want to talk a little bit about about Little Shop because um, you were the original designer and performer of the Audrey Two puppets in Little Shop. Um, yes. Uh, a role that is close to my heart right now as we prepare to come back in the fall. Really? Which is going to be very fun, very exciting. So cool. We're, yeah, we're planning to come back on the 21st day of the month of September. Um, for our no, performance. oh, that's great. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Here's you in the, uh, in the Miami production, which uh, sort of 
was the predecessor to the off, what you would call the out of town uh, predecessor to the Broadway production. Yep. yep. Um, as I said, that is the that is the hottest picture of me ever. <laughs> You'll never see a hotter picture, and that's uh, that's it. It's. I mean, yeah. What well, you, know, <laughs> you know when you've reached your peak. I, I think that's <laughs> that. That was it. Yeah. yeah. That's it right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, so I'm. I'm really. Well, curious. When I did when I did the original when I did the yeah. original one in '82. And then the, the, you know, they call it the revival in, yeah. in 2003, 2003, I think, yeah. uh, uh, the first one, I was just old enough to be able to handle it as far as uh, experience goes. And uh, the second one, I was just young enough <laughs> to still be able to do it. <laughs> still be able to point that thing up there and amazing. I'm, you know, build my body into, uh, into what it needed to actually uh, push that baby around. Yes, because it's a very it's a very physical role, a very physical um, it is. Uh, As you know, kind of puppet. Yes, I saw you after after the performance that I went to see, and you were jacked. <laughs> <laughs> the costume helps. I mean, it's really when you get in all the pads and you're like get all the gloves, and it's like yeah, you really feel that. No, but you know, but underneath you gotta have you gotta have the. No, it's, it, no, it, it's not a it's not a small it's no slimy worm. Let's tell you. Let's, let's no. And and it was always it was always designed to be to be to to be to you know to have the key operation a human you know not some kind nothing nothing you know not not you know not not any kind of remote thing not any kind uh -huh. I, I always wanted a human being right inside those pods giving it you know all that nuance that uh, yeah. you know that we that we can give it person can do yeah yeah. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't a fan of some, some of the uh, some of the versions that uh, that subtracted the human or put the human too far, too far removed. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm really curious about because it, Little Shop, the, those Audrey Two designs, I feel like are so unique. Well, they're 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 unique in the way that they are. They've become so iconic, and the show is licensed with with a lot like alongside your designs, so that those like so that people who license the show can build your designs. And so that's the design that becomes so prevalent. And then that becomes like the only way people see Audrey too is this iconic design that you that you came up with. But there are a lot of shows that have wildly different uh, approaches to, to the character and to the look and how the puppetry works and how much puppetry is involved. I'm wondering like, how does that, like what's your take on all of that? I, I love that. You love uh, it. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I I love that you know that my designs are available and people can use them, uh, and you, you know, you, you, the the designs are very much very intrinsically attached to what to Howard Ashman's intention uh -huh. about what he wanted to happen in certain scenes. You know, that's uh -huh. the I, every every step of the design process was what does Howard need here? What does the you know what? How can we best tell the story? Uh -huh. And and so. So I was thinking of him and you know, taking input from him and, you know, and, you know, and, and giving him the, the, you know, the benefit of what I knew at the time and, 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 and giving him ideas about what, what could, what could work uh, easily and what would be complicated. Uh, so, so you can, so, so, so that's all there available for you when you, when you, when you, uh, when you contract the play. Right. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes I say, you know, d d depart from that at your peril <laughs> because, you know, and, and right. don't don't depart from it just to depart from it, just to be different. F right. You know, but if you can find there have been some brilliant departures, yeah. things that I just wish that I had thought of or that I thought were, you know, we're, we're, we're so much somebody else's design ethic that uh, that it just took on a whole nother aspect. And I love those things when, when it really when it really cooks and, 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 and works with the show. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, you know, when, when they when you found another aspect of of telling of telling uh, that 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 crazy, you know, iconic uh, Faustian tale uh, in a in a in an even stronger way. Yeah. Um, you know, there have been people who put, you know, eyeballs on, on Audrey too, yep. which, which I think is never works. It's always uh -huh. a bad idea. There, I said uh -huh. it. <laughs> <laughs> I think let's get it on the record now. It's, you know, why you, do you, you think it, why do you think you want to, you want to play with, two is you not wanna, a successful move? 
uh, you want to you want to play to the strengths of plants. You uh-huh. want you know, at the end of the day, she, you know she's a you know she's a plant. She's a creature. You know why why revert to uh, you know something as as cheap and obvious as eyeballs when when as we know as, as you well know I mean when you got that big pot and you know she's eight feet long and you know and and you know and filling up the stage. You know, and, and that and that poor little little Audrey, and he's and he's so hungry, and she's walking along, you know, and he's just watching her every step of the way. I mean, that's just that focus is is gut wrenchingly strong. You don't need eyes for that. That's a pff, cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but well, uh, it certainly like makes. Uh, I, I mean, <clears throat> from a puppetry perspective, you're right. It like really puts the puts the emphasis on the focus and like the other things that puppetry can like. The, 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 you can have a puppet look at something without eyeballs. Absolutely. And from a character perspective, really alienates the character. And like, you know, human eyeballs are like one of the first things that we look for in, like we see human faces in, you know, around like just looking at stuff. Like that we, we have the tendency to look for faces and stuff. And so removing those eyes really um, gives a sense of that alien quality, which I think yeah. is really good. It makes, it makes you more of a, more of a universal creature. It's. It reminds me a little bit about. I mean, of the like the xenomorphs in Alien, like the fact that they didn't of that. have eyes. I was thinking of them, yeah. But when that them thing so much more intimidating and so much when, more weird, like when that thing yeah. turns and 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 looks at you right down the barrel, or looks at looks at uh, at Ripley. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 n- mind-numbingly frightening. Yeah. And, you know, I feel very strongly. My I, my daughter is named Ripley. Oh. Ooh, after cool. after Ellen Ripley of the Starship Nostromo. Amazing. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm all, all about aliens. <laughs> You're all in. <laughs> Did you want to throw another question? Yeah, we have another question. <clears throat> oh, from Peter Quart. Your career has been glorious. What have been the most embarrassing moments with puppets? Oh, and best wishes from Africa. Amazing. Thanks. Good question, oh. Peter. Um, yeah, Bear- being a puppeteer isn't always super glamorous. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? It's, you, it's, it's, it's astoundingly hard work. I mean, people think that we're you know, just, you know, wiggling dollies, they're, you know, they're heavy and they're hot. And, and, you know, I mean, just, I mean, just getting it, I love, I love getting inside Snuffy, you know, actually climbing in the skin of a character, but it's heavy and hot and dark and a little dusty. And, you know, and the only thing I can see is, is out the monitor. I mean, I if, don't walk in front of me. <laughs> when I'm off camera, because uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll uh, I'm always you know, in fear of trampling children who are uh, <laughs> come up on me uh, un- unannounced. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's difficult. So the, so the question is, what's my most embarrassing moment? Uh, I I kind of gave up embarrassment when 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 I when I when I, uh, I, I had an epiphany. When I and my eighth year on Sesame Street, which was, uh, you know, Jim Henson used to say it, it, it would take like three years for a puppeteer to be any good at all. It took me eight. And and my epiphany was I was messing around one day with Sonia Manzano, who played Marina, Maria. And and I was for some reason, I was just devil may care. And, and I just started having fun and not caring about about the outcome. And uh, and I and. and you know, and she was laughing. We were having a good time. The scene really worked. And I watched the playback and said, oh, my God. You know, I thought I was just screwing around. What I was was you know, opening a doorway for myself, which was, uh, you know, I got to st- I got to stop caring about I got to I got to I got to shut off that little guy in my brain that says, uh, you know, you can go this high, but any higher and, and it'll be it'll look crazy. They'll think you're nuts. Uh, you know, and you go up this high. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna come take you away now, because you know, and, and you'll and everyone will hate you because they'll you know they're because they'll know that you're uh, a nut job. Yeah. And what I found was that if I just gave up all that self doubt and uh, and and all that myself squashing myself down, all that embarrassment. Yeah. Uh, that all of a sudden it just everything just opened up. Mm-hmm. And and and, I, and I've I've kind of become known in the business as 
full commitment, uh, uh -huh. full crazy insane commitment. Uh, for you know, for a shy kid from Wisconsin, you know, I can, you know, I can. I mean, there, I can. You, I don't know if you've ever seen me pull out the stoppers, but I can pull out the stoppers. You really go. I can really go. Yeah. Uh, you know, the poor sound people, uh, you know, if, if it's a new person, I say, you, you're going to want to, you're going to want to take down the gain on this because I will, sure. uh, you know, and don't put your headphones here, you know, start them here and then slow right. it. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, so I gave up embarrassment Yeah. and the world opened up for me, not just, not just as a puppeteer, not just professionally, uh, you know, as a, as a partner, you know, as a, as a husband, mm -hmm. as a dad, as a son, uh, I, uh, it's almost impossible to embarrass me these days, uh, <laughs> for me to embarrass myself. Uh, yeah. And that's probably the greatest gift I've ever given myself. <laughs> that yeah. being said, you know, you know, there's, there's, there's the typical stuff, you know, where, you know, you're, you're walking along in snuffy and somebody put a bo puts a box where there wasn't one before and you trip over the box sure. and you go, and you go head over heels and everybody said, Oh God, are you all right? All right. And you're fine. <laughs> There's, yeah. Or you're on something and, you know, and, and you're not sure the, you know, the, you didn't gauge the ramp properly and you go 80 miles an hour on your little uh, puppet scooter down the ramp into, into, <laughs> into a, you know, well, I feel like what you're talking about is like the difference between making mistakes and, and an embarrassment is, is like how you feel about what, about your actions. That's right. So that it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. It has, it has to do right. with how you feel about what your actions are for and and the value, right? When you're when you're saying is like when you release yourself of that of that concern and say, well, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I can go as big as I want. Like if they'll tell me to do something different, then they'll tell me to do something different. But like, yes. I just put everything in. Why not put everything in and play? Um, yeah. And you know, and and. And it's and it's a uh, it's it's a it's it's a it's something I I uh, I I, uh, I recommend to you know to new time students is don't spend time don't spend time thinking about what you should have done right uh, and yeah and yeah learn from your mistakes and and try to do better next time but don't sit there beating yourself up I don't want to see that that's not interesting that's not good entertainment right. Uh, right. Uh, you know do do the bit and you know and and if and if it's in, if it's if it's if the producers like it, if the if the director likes it, uh, great, we're done, uh, yeah. and I'll do better next time. Right. Uh, and you know, and the you know the time for self recrimination is ancient history. On yeah. to the next bit. Yeah. Did you want to throw in another question? Yeah, we got there? another great question. Oh, from Mosho. All right. How do you mm -hmm. and, and Brent Young work snuffy? If there's some type of mind melding going there on. There was a, a follow up comment about perhaps a story about running downstairs, which sounds in, crazy. In Snuffy? In Snuffy. Maybe, it sounds so, like maybe Michael Michael Shupak mentioned it once. Oh, that's running funny. downstairs? So for so Brian Young, he works, he, he is in the back side of Snuffy. Yeah. He's, he's been doing Snuffy longer than me. And, <laughs> I, and I've been doing it 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you... At this point, I mean, do you, is there kind of just a mind meld? I mean, you yeah. kind of just know. Yes. You kind of feel each other. Yes. Uh, what, <laughs> I know in the past, in other interviews, you've talked about like, you, in fact, you kind of have to lean against one another to keep Snuffy from sagging in the middle. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I lean, if, if this is, if this is, if this is me <laughs> and this is Bryant. Yeah, I, I I I lean forward a little bit, and he leans backward a little bit, and that yeah. and that creates a, a slight tension between the yeah. front half and the back half, uh, so it doesn't swag. And, and, and it's a feel. I know in when I've done Ben Rocker style puppetry, you can kind of feel the other puppeteers through the puppet. Is it the same yeah. kind of thing? And 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 and, uh, and that's. I mean, it's weird to say, but that's Bryant's job, and Bryant uh -huh. is brilliant at it. I mean, he's a you know he's a he was a ballet dancer for many years. Uh, and and a, and a choreographer for many years, and uh, and so he knows movement, he knows balance, he knows all that stuff. I ne he never knows, and I never know what foot I'm going to start with, for instance. Uh -huh. And he always, and it's it, it's his job to suss that out at the last instant, and then you know go with with the opposite one, yeah. uh, and to feel the tension 
and uh, and we, we you know we very very rarely talk ahead of time about what we're going to do. I mean, it's it is it is a mind meld after this time. I mean, the same way it is with uh, Pam Arciero and I with uh, with Telly. Right. Uh, and I've you know she she was my exclusive right hand for Telly for 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 years. And you know, I mean, every every once in a while we'd have to talk about. All right, you know, we have to rip off this stamp. We have to make believe we lick it. We have to actually put it here on this envelope. We got to press it down, and we got to open up the box and get it. Okay, okay, who's going to do what? And sure. Uh, so I mean, it's it's very much like a dance partner. I mean, it's ha yeah. I mean, it's Fred and Ginger. You know, like, and I think what you're talking about with Brian and and Pam it speaks to the like the important and difficult job of a right hand or of a of an assistant puppeteer which is i think a lot of people probably see that as a as a role that is like you know a stepping stone role or like this is the you know like you you just have to be this assistant puppeteer before you can be the head puppeteer but it but to be a good assistant to be a good right hander is you know an incredibly difficult yeah. uh, position to be in well, you've got to, you've got to, it's, you've got to be willing to uh, go with the flow, you know, just look, look at the big picture, you know, go, you know, widen your focus, you know, it's, you, 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 you zen out, you, uh, you're there as the perfect, uh, as the perfect, uh, uh, you know, partner, uh, yeah. supporter, support system. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 a, we, we, we all love it. I mean, anybody, uh, you know, Every once in a while, you know, you hear somebody, you know, oh, you know, oh, I got, I got to, I got to do a right hand. It, pff, doing right hands is, uh, is, is, you know, it's part of what we do. Uh, you know, it, Pam will right hand for me, and then she does Grangetta, and I'll right hand for her. Uh, Ryan and Dylan, uh, we just did a bunch of uh, 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 location stuff, and he was assisting, assisting uh, Rudy uh, all day. It was great. Uh, it, it's just part of what we do and it's you know and it's the it's the lack of ego mm -hmm. that uh, that you have to uh that i mean ego just does not work in this business at all and one of the reasons why the, the the group for instance at sesame is so is so strong these days is very little ego going on there you know you can we can give each other notes we can you can you know compliment somebody without shining them on uh, we can mm -hmm. you can if you make a mistake they'll they'll you know you can uh, get to uh, get suggestions on how, you know, and how not to do that next time. You know, we're all supporting each other so that the, so that the, the whole, the whole level just constantly goes up. Yeah. Did you want to throw another question? Yes, there? we have a non Sesame question. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Marcello. Hey, Marcello. Uh, what were some of the challenges when you performed the animatronics on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? You oh, all were on the head of Leonardo, as I recall. That yeah, was that challenging. Good. Yeah, I, I was. I was. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not hugely uh, uh, technically oriented. I mean, I can handle the basics, uh, but these things were complicated. This was the first, uh, the first real practical uh, live uh, animation system that you know that that Henson made. Maybe you know, maybe you know the next generation after. <sighs> After what the the dog from uh, from uh, Storyteller, yeah, might have been the first generation, and these, but these were every every head was a prototype, and we had to, you know, there were there were twenty four uh, twenty four little motors in the heads, and we so we we were in charge of everything from the basically from the neck up, so there are twenty four little motors that you had to tell when to go. Of course, you can't control 24 little motors at a time, but the computer, uh, and, and, and there was, a, you know, of course, a little computer attached that you had to program to tell it what increment of each little motor to work at any given time based on this uh, control system you had that, that was programmable to be anything you wanted. Uh -huh. It was just a series of really fancy switches. I mean, yeah, there was a mitt there, and you know, you'd have to be crazy not to attach this to the lower jaw and this to the upper jaw. Right. Um, and, and everybody did that, but, uh, but uh, there, there was a, a slider switch in there, which uh, some, people made, some people made the blink. Uh, I, I, I made it uh, uh, this. Yeah. 
because because that made sense to me. And my blink was here on on, 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 the, on the joystick. So there's you know your hand is clamped in there, and you've got all your fingers uh, plus your thumb doing one, two, three, four. Uh, functions and each of these doing an on-off function, and then the whole joystick itself uh, combining these all these functions in any way that you decided. So this was uh, joy, uh, serenity, fear, shock, and so and so. Right in between that was the, the you know the the different the difference between shock and serenity. Uh, if if you, if you rotated it as opposed to come back to neutral and. So it was things like that, and it made me crazy. Uh, and I'm talking about embarrassing, the most embarrassing moment. There were times when I was programming that, you know, attempting to understand the system, when I could feel little, little Marty start blushing, uh, and you know, in the red. And I said, I'm stupid. I can't do this. I will never get it. I'm, I'm, I'm a failure. I can't. And you just feel the heat rising in your face. And I wanted to cry and run from the room. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't, uh, you know, I, 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 I went out, took a breath, shed a tear or two, went in, you know, and did it again and again yeah. and again until, you know, until I was finally able to master the system, you know, yeah. finally able to bring the guy over who, who invented it and say, look at this, look what I can do. Did you know I could do this? Uh -huh. <laughs> and that was, that was, you know, overcoming that technical technical boundary but but feeling feeling so frustrated and helpless mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. face in the face of that te that technology that was something mm -hmm. and so 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 facing facing that fear and facing that frustration and then being you know finally getting to the point where your fingers just did what they needed to do i mean you know i, I liken a lot of that stuff yeah. to piano playing where you're not thinking you're not thinking 10 fingers, 88 keys, you're thinking music and your fingers do what they need to do to, right. you know, for the, for the, for the music to flow through you. And, you know, that's the place that I got with Leonardo. Yeah. I, I that sound, I mean, that sounds very familiar and likening it to a, a, an instrument. I think is it, something that I do all the time. Also, it, it's like, you know, for people that don't know puppets, it's like learning a new instrument but you rebuild an you rebuild a new instrument every time you learn how to do it. It's an instrument that's never been built before with keys you don't know what they do, or in your case, like keys that could be mapped to anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and getting to that place where you're not thinking about notes, but you're thinking not even thinking about notes and not thinking about music, but thinking about the scene, like the emotion yeah. of this, you know, what you're playing. It was, which uh, is when, when I climb inside Snuffy now, you know, my hands go where they need to go and they do what sure. they need to do. Sure. I don't think about that. I just think about his intention, and, yeah. and the you know, and the and the, and the story that we're we're telling. Yeah, the acting of it, you know. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. So, so you get to you know everything that you know as a human being, as an actor, you know, is is allowed to flow, yeah. and it's not and isn't 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 uh, bollocked up or dammed up or even or even uh, diminished or delayed by the by the by the the technical barriers and there's always those maddening technical barriers aren't there yeah exactly did you want to throw another question yeah we another really great question great oh from Marcello again yeah what are the best exercises you can share for starting monitor puppetry for the first time that's a good question uh, yeah, um, best exercises uh Annie <laughs> your wife Annie this is live honey <laughs> Hi, Annie. <laughs> She's placing an order for dinner because I'm not oh, cooking great. tonight. Uh, exercises for star uh, monitor puppetry. Uh, yeah. Yes, get in front of a monitor and spend hours and hours and hours and hours in front of the monitor. Uh, it's. I mean, there's, there's, there's. I mean, there's. You know, simple exercise. I haven't got any. Uh, uh, there's no puppet here. No, no. Uh, not even any eyeballs. Usually, there's eyeballs. Uh, well, that's yeah, what, the puppet doesn't even need eyeballs. <laughs> That's right. One of the best <laughs> exercises is, is is finding center, finding finding uh, finding you know being straight up and down, getting getting the uh, the uh, the tilt out, uh, finding the focus with your characters, and then and then finding it again, and yeah. finding it again, and doing this a thousand <laughs> times until <laughs> until, you're, until basically until you're correcting faster than the viewer can 
can tell. Can perceive, yeah. yeah I, I, I well, still, I'm still correcting, but I correct generally faster than you can than you can tell. Uh huh. So yeah, there, there's nothing, nothing uh, that substitutes for uh, you know a thousand hours in front of the monitor. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, it gets you to that place where you're not thinking about the technical aspects. Get, oh, learning God. to work on a monitor um, to, and learning to, you know, see the, the reverse of what you are performing or feeling like you're seeing the reverse of what you're performing, but in fact, seeing what the audience sees. That's a technical challenge. And you just have to like a thousand hours. That's about right for getting over, yeah. you know, getting to be able to act in a different body. You know, yeah. if, if you don't know your left from your right. You definitely don't know you're happy from your sad or your right. joy from your sorrow or your, right. you know, you're, you're still still you're still working on left and right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, another thing that you we you know, we've, anyone who uh, I encourage everyone to go and look at your website as well, which we'll put up on the screen in a second. But um, I, I haven't I haven't I haven't refreshed that in years. Well, Let's I think see. it's just great because it, it really even as unrefreshed as it may be, it, it, the breadth of style that you've worked in, I think is really great. And, and something that really speaks to me as someone that wants to explore all of the boundaries of, of what puppetry has to offer. Don't, don't you dare use the word boundaries with puppetry. Well. No boundaries. That's fair. That's what, fair. What, what, certainly... what did you learn in Puppet Anarchy? Well, there's no boundaries. <laughs> But I'm saying, can't you look <laughs> for where they are and discover that they're further than you, that that you thought? Like, okay, that's fair. I'm an, I'll revise my statement. Yeah, you can. You're, you can you're say, totally keep, right. You could say keep pushing the boundaries. Uh, the, the 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 whole point of the of of of, of that exercise at the O'Neill was was we've given ourselves all kinds of limitations, haven't we? You know, we've we've yeah. decided what tabletop puppetry is. We've decided. Uh, you know, we've made all these things, these, we've put ourselves in all these little boxes and maybe we don't need those little boxes. Yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. I was so fortunate the first year that I was at the O'Neill, I was in your puppet anarchy class, which was all about this or puppet anarchy strand. It was a strand at the O'Neill. It was all about finding what puppetry can be, finding all of the different things that, that like throwing all of the definitions out the window. Yes. And I see that reflected in all of the work that you do, which I think is really, that, that is really amazing to me. So how do you have a process that you, that you use to kind of dismantle boundaries or do you have a process that you use to say, oh, here's a boundary that I thought was here. Let's see, let's press past that. Or let's, um, you know, like what are the, what are the, uh, do you have a process for exploring a well, process for exploration? I, I would say. Uh, what, what you just said is, 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 you know, that's, that's a, that's a good, a good definition of, of, you know, what we should all be asking ourselves, uh, um, uh, you know, is, is what, uh, what, you know, what, what boundaries do we really need? I mean, I mean, what's, what's, what's the, how much of, what I'm doing is what I've done in the past and easy things that I've, you know, you, you know, what, you know, what's the easy, what's the easy choice for me and, and should I be making the easy choice? Uh, you know, sometimes uh, I'm, I'm not putting it well. Uh, you, you have to, you have to constantly, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, put under the microscope your, your assumptions. And, and, I, and I'm, you know, and I, and I, you know, and I know what my, my challenges are, you know, I, I love complicated things mm -hmm. and I, you know, and I love my little technology and, uh, and I, uh, you know, and it's, and it's a, it's a trap that I used to fall into a lot and I still, but I still, I still watch out for that. You know, I, so I'm, I'm, I constantly ask myself, what's the, what's the most, what's the simplest, most elegant way of, presenting this yeah uh you know way you know and and what's what's the intent of the story uh okay. not the in, what's not what's the intent of what i want to make or some yeah. cool thing that i want to do right uh well i think that speaks to what you're talking about is sort of getting getting rid of your ego from the from the equation where you're 
thinking more about this thing outside you, this story outside you, and like, what is it? How can I serve this? How can I serve this thing? Rather than necessarily saying, what is it that I need to do? What is it that's interesting? And and, and often serving this thing is serving the audience. I mean, yeah. I'm serving I'm serving my artistic vision, but I'm all you know. You know at, but on the on the same time, and you know, on the, on the same path, this is for human beings to see. And 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 as long as my vision and my version of the truth and my story that I want to tell has a has a human component or 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 a, or a component that that appeals to you know, to humanity in general, mm -hmm. uh, you know, certainly not to everyone. I mean, what, what's always, what's always surprising to me, which I just love is sometimes I'll do something incredibly personal that I think mm -hmm. is, Oh, I'm the only one who's going to get this. And then I present it and it's like, Oh my God. And, and everyone, you know, feels the same way. Right. You know, and, I mean, goodness, we do this all the time. All of us is, Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. It's it, I'm, I'm alone in the world, and the only person who will ever understand me is myself. And uh, and then and then you put it out there, and and everyone everyone breathes a sigh of relief, and you know and and you know and or, or clasps it, or, or you know and and you know holds you by the arms and says thank you, thank you for revealing my truth. I said, well, yeah. Great. Well, and I think that that's super that's super important to remember because that that step of identifying that thing that you think is the only you understand or only you know about and that step of then presenting that to other people can be super scary and can be it's very it's a very vulnerable position to put yourself in yeah. and to remember that like that that it becomes a it becomes a human moment when you share it and that other people will be there to catch you. Other people are there to say, yes, me too. Like, yes, and, and, that's and my can. experience. And, 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 and we, we've also had the experience of seeing uh, somebody present something that is obviously something that they worked on a lot and feel very strongly about and has nothing to do with humanity. Right. It has nothing to do with, with, uh, with storytelling or, shared experience you know and, and it's and it's and it and it's it's uh it's or or it's so so wrapped up in ego that uh, that, you, that you that you can't can't discern the you know the the gift of the uh, of the storytelling from the you know the pain and anguish of the personal ego yeah. uh, well and, it's hard to feel like you as an audience member are being valued for being there like right. watching something like that as well right you would, do, you would do this thing if uh if i wasn't here so what, what am i here for <laughs> like right and, and i and i've heard some performers say exactly that yeah. uh you know it's if if you know if, if they don't get it then then they shouldn't be there uh if uh, and you know and then you ask around it's like nobody gets it <laughs> Did you yeah. have one more question you want to throw in there? You're in a vacuum here. Amazing. Great. This is from Leonardo Garcia. How has the experience of training new puppeteers in Sesame's international productions or local workshops? And you also learn a lot from there. Yeah. I, I also was curious because, you know, you talked about, I also think people should go to your website because I think it's the only puppeteer website I've ever seen that has a, a whole section devoted to mentors, but your mentors and the people that have got you to the place where you are. And I think that that's so important to recognize, especially now that you are, a, a, you know, a teacher in the community and you are now mentor to a lot of people. How do you see that, especially like, how do you see your role there, especially when you're uh, working overseas or internationally? The, the, the stuff, the stuff that I do internationally for Sesame International is it's, it's, it's easily the most rewarding work I do. It's, uh, it's, I just, just love it. Being able to, being able to, you know, give the, the gift of this, of this skill to people who are, you know, so hungry for it. And, and, uh, and I've, you know, I've, I've become producers ask me, well, how, how are you going to pick the right people? Well, 
You're just going to have to trust me. I can, I know them when I see them. <laughs> uh, but if you put me in a room with 50, 60 uh, hopefuls, uh, I can, I can find the puppeteers in the group and, I, and, and, you know, and then, and then train them. It's, it's just, it's so much fun to do. I've, I've you know, and I've done that. I've done that all over the world uh, and made, lasting, lasting uh, friendships. Uh, people who are, you know, they start out as your students and then they, then they become your, uh, you know, your, your cohorts, cohorts and friends and, uh, and, and coworkers. Uh, some of them have come to Sesame Street and, you know, brought their skills there. But the coolest part is that they become, uh, uh, they become tools of communication for, for the kids of their country. Uh, and you know, and so you know, in this ever ever widening circle, uh, so yeah, so that's 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 what I do to to change the world. I mean, I've got you know, I've got a probably I don't know, oh, you know, ten, fifteen, uh, maybe uh, co-productions, maybe maybe more, you know, we're, we're 10, 10 people in each, uh, so you know, hundred, hundred fifty people. Uh, who are now, you know, now my students are training people, training their next generation. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it's all, you know, kind of starts with that, you know, that, that kernel of an idea. Uh, so, yeah, so, so when I would, when I was brought into Sesame, it was, you know, the way they would train you is they would, well, here's a, here's a room with a monitor uh, and here's a puppet, uh, play you can you can have the room for a couple of hours uh it, you know it's, it's the equivalent of you know here here's 20 feet of water swim kid uh <laughs> so but so one of the things that that i've done uh, because i didn't think that was the best way to learn <laughs> uh -huh. was i've uh i've established a system and i've codified the system you you do this you do you do you do this, then you you know when you can handle that, and then you put on the next layer of the onion. And when you do that, the next layer, and the next layer, and the next layer, and you build up your layers, you know, with this kernel of of uh, of technique at the beginning, and then uh, and and you know, and it's a step by step process. And if you if you master each step of that process, you you know you can become a uh, you know a, a useful uh, puppeteer in, in 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 media. Yeah. So. So we we follow that system, uh, and we've had we've reinstated the workshops in New York. So we have those uh, fairly regularly. Of course, with COVID, we've uh, we've pulled back. Well, we've we've done uh, uh, we, a, a virtual. We've we've done Zoom stuff. We've got a one coming up next week. Uh, we've got the, the the mentees at Sesame. We've got right. what is six eight eight folks that uh, that are. You know they're just brilliant and great and doing spectacular work. Yeah. Well, I also feel like you are brilliant and great and doing spectacular work. So I want to thank you just for being you. And also, you know, I we met at the O'Neill when I was eighteen or nineteen, I think. Wow. That was when you did that that first uh, puppet anarchy. Uh... Yeah. Yep, that very first O'Neill, mm -hmm. I was very much a young, impressionable uh, Nebraska kid, new to the New York and East Coast scene. And that, that O'Neill really changed my life. And I, I think a lot of people have that moment that, um, that really changed their life. And, and really, like, it's not everyone who can say thank you to the people who are responsible for that moment. So I want to say thank you. Uh, and thank you for being here on the show today. And, you know, I'm really happy to know you and get uh, the, the opportunity to work with you every now and then. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Pterodactyl Island may, may actually happen someday. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Marty. I'll talk to you soon. All righty. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Well, thank you all for watching. I want to thank you uh, for being our audience. Huge thanks again to Martin Robinson for being our guest. Definitely check out his website. Even though it hasn't been updated recently, it's it's great just to see the breadth of his work um, and all of the different uh, things that he's done. It's really pretty incredible. Um, you can also uh, check out uh, the O'Neill this year and the O'Neill Puppetry Conference in general uh, at this website. 
Um, you can still sign up for the master classes that are happening in um, just a few weeks in early June, I think. Um, so definitely check that out and check out uh, those programs in later summers. You can follow all of our uh, work here at the Puppet Kitchen at all of this information down below. And you can support this show on Patreon. Um, if you want to uh, support this show and get bring more excellent uh, people from the puppetry community to talk to me, then support okay. us there. Um, and I think that's it. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> and thanks to all of you. Just remember, you don't have to do everything to do something. We'll see you next time.